I'm Loretta and you are listening to Premier Drive here on Premier Christian Radio. It is time to talk about a subject that we all know is something we should do as Christians, you know, just as much as going to church really. But let's be fair, sometimes we have questions about it that we don't feel brave enough to say, we have difficulties that we might feel a bit of guilt around. Uh, Well, Uh, In my own words, and I genuinely mean this, this is a book I've been waiting for for a long time. It's on the subject of prayer. We've covered prayer before on Premier Drive in our FAQ session series where I know we all learnt a load together. But this book could really revolutionise your prayer life and make you feel that you can actually do it and it's actually doing something. And we have the expert on prayer to talk to us, Pete Gregg. Welcome to the show. Hi, so nice (laughs) to be here. Now you've been um, writing, speaking, doing things around prayer for so many years. Um, It's something that in the past I found really difficult to feel passionate about, but where did your passion with prayer start? Was it work or was it naturally there? I I do think, although we all find prayer difficult, to be human is to pray. I mean, when I first held my first baby I prayed when I saw the northern lights I I didn't stand there thinking I'm magnificent I I wanted to worship and when Sammy my wife was wheeled off down the hospital corridor for surgery that I didn't know if she'd survive you better believe I prayed so I think you know to to pray is to be human and 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 the original word in Latin precarious from which we get prayer sums it up life's precarious and so we cry out to God. But how we grow in prayer and get excited about something that can be a bit boring sometimes, the way we're taught, that's another issue. That's what the book, How to Pray, Simple Guide for Normal People, is all about. <laughs> I love the fact that it's got the word simple and normal, because I I'd identify with both of those words. Uh, but at the same time, I think because we're so aware as Christians that it is an integral part of our lives in the times just like some of the ones you've identified where mm. we all have prayed, usually when we feel in desperate need. Yeah. And when we do see the answer to prayer, every time that's happened to me, I'm like, why don't I do this more? Or I'm, I wonder what else God's got to say to me. And of course, we get caught up in busyness and all sorts of other things. But what would you say are some of the main barriers to us having a healthy and consistent prayer life? Well, one of them is we all struggle with disappointments in prayer. So you're right. When a prayer is answered, we think, why don't we do this more? But the the truth is that the church is less honest than the Bible about disappointments and unanswered prayer. The Bible's really, really amazingly honest about, about that subject. And so unless we process those, there's a little bit in our heads going, well, I don't know if it really works. That's the first thing. The second thing is life's super busy and it's not getting any slower if you you know and there's something about slowing down the bible says be still and know that i'm god so we don't find that so easy and then i don't know i've noticed god's mostly invisible and inaudible so that makes talking to him a little bit trickier than chatting to my mate at starbucks or whatever so um, those are some of the practical uh, things i think we all hit on but actually to grow in prayer i think to pray is to, to be human but to grow in prayer and go deeper in prayer that does actually take a little bit of work if i said to you um uh loretta you can get super fit and have this amazing physique but you don't have to worry about what you eat or going to the gym you'd know (laughs) I was lying you'd like the idea and the same with prayer there are some disciplines if we want Mm. to grow in it will help us to grow Uh, now exactly what you said it's it's simple it's for normal people and one of the things that makes it so easy that there are steps to follow you have broken down into nine themes as well Um, I was was looking at the overview of the steps now I got stuck on the first one which is just simply to pause Mm. Um, and when I read that chapter because I was like how how are you going to write a whole chapter on, on, on just pausing and being still like I know it's hard to do but it really resonated with me at how difficult that is for me, how difficult that is for yeah. us in society to do that. And the ir- irony is the things that are distracting us that we feel that we don't have time to stop are the very things that we want to see a result in. Yeah. Um, how can we still ourselves? How can we pause? It, are there practices that can make that easier? Asking yeah. for a friend. Yeah, well, that first thing to say is that's right. The The kind of simple little model for prayer that anyone can do this works for kids this works for you know big groups is the acronym is pray p-r-a-y so it's pause then rejoice 
then ask that's the bit we're all really good at asking <laughs> god for all that stuff and then yield or if you're teaching it to kids just change the word yield for yes which is that bit where you sort of surrender to god and say fill me with your spirit help me to live for you and you can do that paul's rejoice ask yield thing in a couple of minutes on the tube or you could actually spend a whole retreat day going through it so it's really 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 simple and the pause step is so important the way to start prayer is to stop you know it, before we start you know asking God for stuff just pause and remember that he's already with you that he likes you that he hears you and some of the simple techniques and these are thousands of years old that will help us all do that is first of all just either walk quietly or sit comfortably secondly work out if you've got any stress anywhere in your body and then just just consciously relax i tend to carry it in my shoulders but relax and then breathe slowly and deeply and some people get all weird about that and say oh that's new age or eastern but that's rubbish they, you don't need a bible verse for justifying breathing well <laughs> it's just like you know people breathe well and, and actually you know when we panic we breathe in a very shallow way and then that means we get less oxygen to our brains which means we get more nervous and more stressy so actually breathing deeply helps us to feel more peaceful and some people find it helpful to use just like a little prayer word at this stage a little phrase that you repeat it could be thank you Jesus um, the Franciscans just say my God and my oh my God and my all some people pray in tongues at that point and the point isn't to focus so much on the words but to use them as a way of centering your scattered senses on that moment and on God and so those are just some of the things I'll often just sit quietly nice cup of coffee uh, in a nice seat I'll breathe well I'll just uh, pray very simply thank you Jesus thank you Jesus uh, and and it just helps me kind of slow down my pulse shut out the world and be present to the God who is always present to us and uh, so the second one, rejoice. Again, we I loved your analogy of arriving home from being away and your boys straight yeah. away. Have you brought anything back for me, Dad? Yeah. And can you sort out this argument between us? That really reminded me of my son. So I, I picked him up from school yesterday on his birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday. Oh, can you trade Pokemon cards with me to his mate? Yeah. I was like, Mum's here. It's your 10th birthday. Big day. <laughs> I was invisible. And then just was uh, had a, you know, a big list of things that he wanted me to do. And it really made me think, I wonder how many times I've done that for, to God. God, especially if I, I need to do a quick prayer right I need this this and this and why is it so important for us to just obviously to pause but also to rejoice um, what does that do um, when we get to the ask bit if we do the rejoicing first yeah I mean it's important to say none of this is like a technique God's not got a checklist saying well Loretta <laughs> skip to step you know uh, <laughs> so it's, it's, no more, you. it's more like um, dance steps than rungs on a ladder to try and get to God or something but it just this stuff just helps when you're when you're trying to grow in prayer and so yeah the, the next step is is rejoice and the story you're referring to is sometimes I'll get back from some long trip I walk through the front door tired and feeling like a conquering hero and my boys instead of like running to greet me would just be like dad what's for supper <laughs> you know, whatever. and all I wanted was I suppose them just to come and just pause and look at me and go hi missed you give me a hug and then I wouldn't mind you know giving them gifts helping them with supper or whatever and I think the first thing is it's just a bit rude, really, to rub, run into God's presence with a shopping list all the time and never say thanks to him. That's the first thing. The Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And that's just before it, it says that you should bring all your petitions before God. So, um, so, so rejoicing is a good way of approaching God. And I tell you another thing is the truth of the world is that God is good and you're OK. And when we rejoice we recontextualize everything around that reality that we're not fighting god the world's not out to get us but actually there is a good god who's on our side who hears us and there's something about counting your blessings giving thanks to god just pausing to remember all the good stuff that helps you then to do your asking with a bit more faith mm. because you think well god has done that for me and, and, and you know you find faith loretta for the things god hasn't done yet 
by celebrating the little things he has done. Yeah. You, you don't like try and jump to the top of the staircase in one go. You you work out where are the sparks, where are the little things God's done, then you pour a bit of petrol on them by giving thanks and worshipping and rejoicing. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the ask bit is a bit that we're, we're good at and that we know, yeah. but is there anything that we shouldn't ask for that it's not okay to ask God for? Um, well, I, as a teenager, I asked God if I could grow up and become a zookeeper. <laughs> and I also think I wanted to marry a Spice Girl. And I'm so grateful <laughs> that, it, um, with all due respect to all the Spice Girls who are listening today, uh, so and indeed zookeepers, you do a wonderful and marvellous thing. But I, I'm so glad that God did answer those <laughs> prayers. Isn't it great that you know his ways are higher than our ways? You know, his brain is bigger than mine. He knows better than me. But no, I think we can be honest with God about all sorts of stuff. The funny thing about all the extraordinary prayers that you find in the Bible, like most of the great patriarchs prayed prayers along the lines of, God, I wish I didn't have to lead these people, and why did you ask me to do this? The extraordinary thing isn't that they got prayed, because we all pray prayers like that, is they didn't get redacted from the text. Mm. They're still in there. Yeah. So it's okay to have a real conversation with God. I, look, you don't have to pretend. You know, God sees you all the time. So be honest with your heart's desires. But understand that God has got the right to say no to some of your requests, just like any good parent would. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the yield bit, there's a phrase that I was told when I became a Christian as a teenager, the whole, so pray as it depends on you, work like it depends on God. What, what do you think about that? Where does yielding come into that? Why is it important for us to kind of yeah. let go at the end? Yeah, there's other little saying isn't there let go and let god yeah and i think maybe it's helpful to think about something like um surfing you know it, it you ultimately have to surrender to the power of, of, of the wave romans 12 says offer your bodies as a living sacrifice pleasing acceptable to god and so prayer isn't just us trying to get god to do our stuff prayer is ultimately about us saying amen to god's will that's why it's when you pray in the name of Jesus that mm. miracles happen. It's when you work out what's God saying, what does God want, and then how can I use my free will as and my choices as a landing pad for what God wants to happen. So um, prayer isn't this technique, try and make God do stuff. Really, prayer is about us bringing ourselves into line to say yes to God, to, to yield to him. And, and, and so it's always good at the end of a prayer time to, to say, God, I just want to serve you today and I want to say yes to you today. Whatever you want me to say, wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do, you're the boss. I'm not. Um, fill me with your spirit. You know, use me for your purposes today. And and it's when we are surrendered to God that we experience his resurrection life. There are so many times where I I was fighting God because I thought I knew best. And eventually in relinquishing to him, I found he had something much better for me. Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good for those who love God. You're listening to Premier Drive with me, Loretta, and my guest on the show today is Pete Gregg. We are talking all about his new book, uh, How to Pray, A Simple Guide for Normal People. Uh, Pete, again, thank you so much for writing this book. I know it's going to change many people's prayer life and change, I think, their perce perception of themselves and, and being able to relate to God. And you've broken it down so simply. Um, and we spoke before about things perhaps that are, are not, oh, well, that there's in a way no off limits to what we say to God. It's all about conversation with God and talking to God. I wanted to speak to you a bit about hearing from God, because of course that comes in with prayer. And I know you, you've written books about not hearing from, from God as well. Um, and if you would just share with us a little bit of the time when you really felt like you were in a way battling with God and needing to hear from him, not necessarily hearing in the way that you thought you would, because I think all of us have a lot of experiences like that. There's the, the times when we um, immediately see an answer to prayer in the way we'd thought or hoped are few and far between. Mm. But of course, it doesn't always mean he's not working, does it? No, that's right. It's normal um, for Christians to experience times where it's like God's on mute. That was the yeah. the name of that particular book. And um, those can often be times that we actually really grow in our faith, but they're really tough, really difficult. And um, for me personally, one of those, I've had several of those seasons in my life uh, where my prayers felt like they were bouncing off the ceiling, the old feelings that I'd had of God's closeness just weren't there. And it was a bit like going through the motions. 
And it's important to remember that going through the motions isn't actually a bad thing to do. Uh, in my marriage to Sammy, if if um, I only ever, you know, was close to her or kind to her when I felt like it, we wouldn't have a good marriage. Mm. So, you know, there's something in that. But, um, yeah, when our second son was um, just seven weeks old, Sammy had a massive epileptic fit and which had never happened before and was rushed into hospital and we found out she got a brain tumour. And um, I've always talked, you know, pretty openly about about that, but it was the, the most scared that I've ever been in my life. And um, it definitely bump-started my prayer life. Um, so, so suddenly I was pr- as primary carer for our, our, our two kids and um, Sammy had to have brain surgery, obviously. And I mean, the great news, we're really so lucky that, that she, she survived and she's alive. She still has chronic illness, but she, she's so much better. And I, I kind of went to this weird thing where that, the, the 24-7 prayer movement had just begun and I was getting all these amazing stories of God speaking, God acting, miracles from around the world. And then my own deepest prayers for my own wife just weren't working. I was watching her slip into seizure after seizure, crying out to God, and it wasn't working. And I suppose I felt I've got to be honest about my disappointments in faith if I'm also going to be honest about the encouragement and the joy and the wonder of it all. Mm. And try not to flip one way or the other. Some people just make out it's all one big glory story, and it just isn't. It's not just not biblical. The, the Bible's full of people hurting like hell. But equally, I don't want to become cynical and say, you know, God doesn't exist or God's not kind because I couldn't deny all the good stuff he'd done in my life. And so I think learning to listen to God is 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 incredibly important. Sometimes it is as though he's not speaking, he's withdrawn a little bit for a season. And in those times, it's important to remember that God's silence is not his absence. He's promised, I will I'll always be with you, even to the very end of the age. So if someone listening now saying, I feel like that, God seems a long way away. I, I don't feel like I can hear him. Please know God is with you and it won't be like this forever. What encouragement or answers can we give to people who um, are, that that's an extended period of time? Um, so perhaps they've been praying or waiting for a healing or for a child or one of those things. Um, do we take it that God's answer is no? Do we keep asking? Is there a time um, a time when it's about petition and just keep on praying when when do we know what to do with that if there's an answer to that <laughs> i mean it's a big question isn't it i mean one of the really simple things that most people already have come across but i put in the book is is that old traffic like principle that sometimes you get a, a dramatic green light quick miracle sometimes it's an amber light it's it's weight and it's so difficult you have to keep persevering it's like you have to keep stacking dominoes you know if you're a, uh, if you're an amber light don't park your car and <laughs> throw away the keys bad idea um, but wait keep praying and sometimes it is a red light and God says no and and that can be incredibly painful You know, uh, my friend Tim Hughes says God only has two speeds, slowly and suddenly. (laughs) And most miracles take years to happen quickly. And so if you're in a slowly season, the story of the Bible is God moving pretty slowly. And I guess, you know, he's eternal, so he's not always in in as much of a hurry as us. And, And that is difficult. I think one of the things is that as we persevere, uh, we grow actually in faith uh, it's like we get stronger but also um, there is a spiritual battle and some things God wants to happen but there is an enemy who's actively opposing it that's why we have to pray if we don't pray there are things that God wants to happen that won't happen unless we pray so keep keep stacking dominoes keep praying if you keep hitting a brick wall it's worth going to someone that you trust and respect and asking their advice say you know Am I praying in the wrong direction here? Try and listen to God's word in the Bible. What's God saying about this situation? And finally, don't try and jump to the top of the staircase in one go. So don't always just pray a really big prayer like, um, let my son come back to faith. That's a really big prayer. It might be, God, when I see him on Saturday, just help me to encourage him more than I normally do. Or help me to have a conversation with him about you. Or Um, show me how to pray for him today and I'll text him later about it so sometimes just work out what's the next step Mm. or if it's a medical thing you know I've I've often prayed God heal my wife 
and that's not yet fully happened but sometimes my prayers will be give us a good medical appointment next thursday yeah. so try and pray the next step sometimes and then you'll have other times you've got a surge of faith and that's when you pray to the top of the stairs that's so good that's so good it gives us something to do where we feel like we're doing something or, or rather inviting god in um in terms of praying for others and um that you categorize as intercession just tell us or give us a few tips around that because many of us feel helpless when we see some of the big things happening around the world or even in our families like you say like having members of our family who, who don't know the lord and we want them to um is there a specific technique in praying for other people you know one of the incredible things is that uh, as a follower of jesus you're not just an ordinary person you are being trained to rule and reign with christ you are uh, you fill with his spirit you have much more authority than you realize and one of the things we're all called to do is to intercede that literally just means stand in the gap as it were between god and the problem and um and to 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 pull god's word god's promises god's desires into that situation through prayer and uh, so we're called to do this uh, at, at personal levels like you say loretto might be interceding for you know a loved one but also to intercede for the nation you know 1 timothy 2 says that you know the first thing we should do when we come together as christians and by the way this is one of the verses most churches disobey continually <laughs> is we should pray for those in authority over us that all may go well with us in the land and at a time of brexit and digital porn and just chaos all around uh, the world has never needed God's people to intercede more than they do than it does right now, and and that's why I've written the book because we all know that prayer is necessary and needed, but we find it difficult, and the world's confusing. And the book tries to help people know how do you intercede into those kind of situations. Mm. I think, uh, ironically, as much as we were joking earlier about the ask bit is easy, some of us find it difficult to pray for ourselves. And we're okay with play, praying for other people, but we yeah. feel like, is it, is it okay to ask for this thing that I want? Is that selfish or should I be sorting that out? Uh, any words of encouragement or advice on that? Most people's biggest problem with prayer is God. <laughs> like, they, they just don't think that God likes them uh, or wants to spend time with them. If deep down you don't think God's smiling you'd have to be an idiot to want to spend time with him right i mean who wants to go and hang out for hours on end with someone who hates them and is judging them continually you have to get your head around the fact that god likes you um that he desires your presence more than you desire his that he's on your side and he's working on your behalf and when as you begin to get your head around that you start to want to be with him because you know that you're loved and I think sometimes we, we struggle to ask God for stuff because we believe that God cares for other people and other big important situations but we struggle to believe that he really cares about the little things that are going on in our head our hearts our diaries our bank accounts and whatever else yeah so true so true um, and what about when we think we okay I think I've heard from God mm. um, eight how can we do that more how can we hear god's voice but what about if we have those doubts that is this really god is it even the devil speaking to me like how do i know this is god speaking well first of all if it's god it's going to look like jesus it's going to be the kind of thing that jesus would say or do and if it if it doesn't feel like look like sound like jesus then chuck it out secondly ask the question how big a deal would this be if i got it wrong like uh, if it's i think god's telling me to tell my neighbor about him well it doesn't really matter just do it it's, it's, you know. but if it's go and marry the stranger in the third row you might no matter how dramatically you god speaks to you you might want to go and just seek some advice from a, a wise christian and you might want to um just look for some other leading and frankly you know the main gift god wants to give to most christians isn't tongues it is common sense and uh we need common sense sometimes about like you know actually i'm not going to marry the, the stranger in the third row i'm actually but i might ask her out for a drink <laughs> and see if she's a psycho hose beast or someone that i can get on with you know <laughs> There's so much more we could talk about, but there's so much practical advice in the book. You you are going to be blessed by this book. If you think that prayer is a subject that you can never think of reading a book on because you struggle with it, this is the book that you're going to enjoy. Um, before we let you go, Pete, though, I just wanted to ask you a bit about 24-7 prayer, which I'm a, a big fan of. Just tell us a bit more about that and how we can uh, find out more as well. Well, one of the
of the really exciting things we're developing right now is we put together this prayer course, which is an online uh, video driven discussion uh, around the Lord's Prayer, different stages of different types of prayer. It goes, it looks through adoration, confession, um, uh, spiritual warfare, unanswered prayer, listening to God, contemplation. And um, you can download that from prayer prayercourse.org and what's great is that dovetails in with this book so there's eight sessions and um, you watch like a 15 minute video it's free and then there's a cheat sheet so you can have discussions and it'll help you on your own or with friends or in your church to get your head around prayer and then this book if you want to go a bit deeper actually dovetails right in uh, with that more than a million people have used the prayer course so far we've just refilmed it we've just we're just re-releasing it now and uh, we're pretty excited about it so that's one of the things but lots is going on with 24 7 uh, the thy kingdom come initiative has gone insane you know gone crazy uh spread in three years on pentecost sunday now last year we were in 85 countries Trees and you know millions of people involved um, prayer space in schools is growing exponentially as we turn classrooms into prayer rooms and kids come along and encounter God uh, as part of you know um, cross-curricular experiential learning they call it and uh, um, you know we, we've got these monastic communities all around the world and more and more churches are just praying night and day it's become normal a few years ago you had to go to South Korea to see people praying night and day yeah. you can now go to funny little parish churches <laughs> in Norfolk and 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 people are praying through the night my mum's little lovely little church on the Isle of Wight you know did 24-1 and and if you'd said that a few years ago people said no I don't believe it but now it's becoming normal so the sea level of prayer is rising in the United Kingdom and we know that when that happens that is the beginning of God changing everything every major revival in world history began with a movement of prayer and we are seeing one right now so 24-7 is a part of that and it's just really exciting time to be alive. And is there a website? Yeah, go to 247prayer.com or uh, do come and join us. We've got a big festival in May called Wildfires and uh, we've got thousands of people coming together on the beautiful Western Estate to fan the flames of the next Great Awakening. Brilliant. Pete, thank you so much for being our guest. And once again, thank you for writing your book, How to Pray, Simple Guide for Normal People. It is out now. Thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs>